Welcome to this Toolhound Learning Center video on the most basic task in any tool crib, checking out and returning tools, parts, and equipment. We'll look at checking out and returning inventory in the browser and on the mobile app. We'll look at handling damaged inventory when it comes back. And we'll even look at reassigning inventory when it changes hands but does not come back through the tool crib. Let's look at checking out and returning inventory in the browser. The browser is cross-platform, so it can be used on any operating system, and you have the option to print transaction receipts. The browser also supports scanning if you have hardware such as a wedge USB scanner. And when returning, you can quickly fetch a list of issued inventory for the entity. Let's check out inventory to the Lachine Peer project. We type a partial entity name and select Lachine Peer from the list. Next, we select the issue transaction type We'll enter the ID for a crusher. The warning says that it's overdue for service, but we can ignore that for now. Next, an optical level. And safety vests. A warning is displayed that this part isn't on the rate sheet used by the transaction rental module. We'll continue with changing the quantity by entering a period and a number in the item ID field. And it updates the grid. Lastly is chipping hammers. We'll set the quantity to 2 in the grid. We'll select the option to print a transaction receipt before saving. And the transaction receipt is displayed, so we can print it if we choose. Peter is taking inventory for the PVM job. So we'll type in a partial entity name, select the transaction type, and for the job, we'll select large projects and enter the code in for the PVM subjob. We could select a cost code or a work order or enter notes, but they aren't required for this transaction. We enter in the item ID for an angle grinder. And then for some string lights. Next, some earplugs. And we'll update the quantity by entering decimal 2 in the item ID. That updates the grid. Peter wants 5 out of service tags, so we'll scan that in and update the quantity in the grid. We'll throw in an extra grinding disk before we save the transaction. Peter is back to return some inventory. So we'll enter his entity ID and select the return transaction type. Next, we can select from the list of return statuses. The default is OK, but you can select from damaged, retired statuses, and any custom statuses. We'll select OK. The first item we enter is an angle grinder. It's come back a little bit banged up. So we'll override the default return status with damaged. It still goes back into inventory, but the damage has been noted. Clicking Issued Inventory fetches a list of all items outstanding to Peter. We'll select the string lights and click OK. Note that it takes the default return status. Peter originally took five out of service tags, but he didn't use them all up. He's returning a quantity of four. The out-of-service tags are consumable, and so they aren't expected back, but can be returned. And we'll click Save to process the return. Let's look at checking out and returning inventory with the mobile app. There are versions for both Android and iOS operating systems. They can be used on any mobile device, but they're most efficient when used with a mobile device with a dedicated scan engine. And an added benefit is that it can be used to collect signatures. We'll check out the same inventory to the Lachine Peer as we did in the browser. Tap to select the transaction type issue, scan, type, or look up the entity. We'll search by a partial name. And we'll select Lachine Peer from the list.
The same optional fields are available for reference, work order, job, subjob, and cost code. We tap cart to enter the inventory. Entering in the item ID for the crusher, we get the same message that it requires service. We'll tap OK to continue. We enter the item ID for the optical level. Next, the safety vests. We'll increase the quantity on the detail row, either entering the number or tapping plus. And to send out two chipping hammers, we can simply scan it in twice, and that will update the quantity on the row. And to process this transaction, we'll tap Save at the top right, then we'll tap Yes on the confirmation message, and tap OK. We'll check out the same inventory to Peter Clifton as we did in the browser. The issued transaction type is retained from the last transaction. We'll type in Peter's Entity ID, and we'll look up the job, Large Projects, and then we'll look up the subjob, PVM. Next, we tap Cart. And we'll enter the item ID for an angle grinder. Next, we'll scan in some string lights. And some earplugs. We'll scan those in twice. And that updates the quantity to two on the detail row. And then some out of service tags and we'll change the quantity using the plus on the detail row. And finally, we'll scan in a grinding disc. We'll tap the signature or a squiggle icon at the top right, and then sign for the transaction, and tap Save. To process the issue, we'll tap Save at the top right, tap Yes on the confirmation message, and tap OK. Peter is returning some inventory. Let's change the transaction type to Return, and note the default return status of OK. We'll enter Peter's Entity ID, and then tap Cart. We enter in the angle grinder, but it's a little banged up, so we will override the default return status of OK with Damaged, which still puts it back into inventory. Next, we scan in the string lights. Peter was issued out-of-service tags, but he's returning what he didn't use. Although consumable, they can still be returned, and we update the quantity on the detail row. And we'll tap Save at the top right corner to process this return, Tap Yes on the confirmation message, and tap OK. Let's look at the Reassign Assets feature. This allows you to record tools that have been swapped in the field when you're advised either by a phone call or an email. This can also happen for a vacation cover or a shift rotation, etc. It's moving all the inventory or some inventory from one entity to another. And it's a two birds, one stone feature where you're combining the issue and the return in a single process. We're going to reassign the assets from Carlos to Alvaro. First, we select the stocking location. And in the return from header, we enter the entity ID for Carlos. We select the transaction type and the return status. I'm using a custom transaction type and return status. Next, in the issue to header, We'll enter the Entity ID for Alvaro, and select the transaction type for the issue. Now we can select the inventory to be reassigned by clicking Issued Inventory. Everything except the Fire Extinguisher 1487 is being reassigned, so we'll click in the top left corner to select all items, and then deselect the Fire Extinguisher, and click OK. We scroll down the page to see that all the items have been added to the list. 
We then click Save at the top right corner. And two transactions have been created, the return and the issue. Let's review what we've learned so far. There's one transaction type per transaction. Statuses can vary within a return transaction and transaction volume drives the most efficient method, whether you're going to use the browser or the mobile app. Mobile devices with dedicated internal scan engines are more efficient and ergonomic than smartphones. Other methods to issue inventory include picking requisitions, using the kiosk, and imports. Thanks for watching this video from the Toolhound Learning Centre. For any questions, contact our support team and remember, subscribe and hit the notification bell.